had such an incredible prayer walk this morning. Thanks for joining me today in my office. I love to pray through God's Word. I, I've been studying through the book of Acts. I call it the early church challenge. But this morning I was just drawn to the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. I have prayed through the Beatitudes for over three years. Praying scripture is so powerful and it has its blessing. It has a reward each and every day in our lives. In Matthew chapter five, I had been reading verse one. One day, as Jesus saw the crowds gathering, he went up on the mountainside and he sat down. His disciples gathered around him and Jesus began to teach. We call it the Sermon on the Mount. It's found in Matthew chapter five, six, and seven. It's the single largest recorded discord or teaching of Christ in the entire Bible. It all begins with the Beatitudes. And again, there's power and blessing in praying scripture. The Beatitudes has some real key components. Today, as I was praying through the Beatitudes, I was reminded of how our hearts can be so broken. Life can be filled with so much disappointment. I know for myself, I, I walked uh, to my office from my home in, here in Antelope today. My, my car's been in the shop all week long. It's a terrible story and I won't bore you with it, but it's a lot of stress. I still don't have my car back. And when I took my car in, it was just to get the oil changed. It didn't work out. To say I was upset or disappointed is a very, very small way to describe how I felt. But when we get sick, when our jobs collapse, when the economy collapses, there's all kinds of reasons, maybe a broken relationship, maybe your home or your family or something's gone wrong and it's left you with a broken heart. I find praying the beatitude has the blessing even for the brokenhearted or those that are deeply hurt or disappointed. In my life, sometimes I wake up and I am completely empty. I just am not in a place that I have any creativeness. I have no passion. I, I have no energy. And if you're brokenhearted or disappointed, the outcome can be draining upon you and you can be empty. Praying the Beatitudes is a great blessing for the brokenhearted and for the person that is empty. Sometimes we just feel like we've drifted away from God and we want to be renewed and we want to be refreshed. We, we want that experience in the Lord. And I know this morning, as I was walking from my home to my study here at Antelope Christian Center, I was praying through the Beatitudes the entire morning. Oh, the Bible says, blessed are those that are poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. For those that are poor in spirit, and that means empty. Literally, that means empty. That means they're broken hearted. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For they shall receive the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. And that word mourn speaks of what it is to experience being brokenhearted or being disappointed. When we go through tough times and we can't go forward, we realize it's Christ in our lives that comforts us. Blessed are the meek. Uh, that's not the word weak. That means that we respond to whatever happens to us with a humble spirit. And I'm telling you from personal experience, that's not an easy thing. The old man, the sinful nature, the old nature, the flesh within us, we don't want to be meek. We want to exert our strength and our power and our influence. But you know what? Jesus taught us in the Beatitudes, you will be blessed if you respond with meekness. You will inherit the earth. It's kind of interesting how in the Beatitudes we see uh, inherit the kingdom of heaven and inherit the earth.
Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Are you empty? Are you empty right now? When I started my prayer walk, oh, I was so tired and frustrated and upset thinking about problems in my life. But as I began to hunger and thirst for the things of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, has a way of filling us up. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those that mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. And how about the merciful? Jesus taught, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. We all need mercy in our lives. And it's something that flows from us. As we give mercy, God blesses us with mercy. Even in the Lord's prayer, Lord, we pray, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us, showing mercy to others. And what about experiencing the fullness of God? Well, it all begins with a pure heart. It's so easy to let sin, problems, fill your heart, and you lose that purity in your spirit. You wash your dishes every day. You wash your clothes once a week. You wash your car once a month. You know what it is that things become dirty or dusty. Our heart to stay pure. When we have a pure heart, God says, Jesus taught, we will see God. Can you see God today? Well, don't worry about your eyesight. Worry about your heart. If you're struggling seeing the Lord work in your heart or life, it's not that he's not. It's just that our glasses become dirty. Our focus gets distracted. And it all happens with a pure heart. Not being able to see God isn't a problem with our eyesight. It's a problem with our heart. My prayer walk is an opportunity to say, God, look at my heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Forgive me for that that is wrong. Fill my heart. Cleanse my heart. Let me end this prayer walk this morning with a pure heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Yeah, I stumble through this one a lot. This beatitude, it is really something. Because the way I got to figure is if you're not a peacemaker, you're a troublemaker. And if you're a troublemaker, number one, you're not a child of God. Who are you a child of? Is it possible that troublemakers are children of the power of darkness? Yeah, it sure is. But the good thing is, blessed is the peacemaker because they shall be called children of God. And remember what Paul wrote to the church in Galatians. We call it the fruit of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. Oh, the persecuted. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness, for his name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, I prayed through the prayer. I prayed through the Beatitudes this morning on my early morning prayer walk. And I'm telling you, I've got the victory. My heart is filled with joy. My spirit has been refreshed. Would you do it? Would you just take a moment, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. And today is your opportunity. Today is your day to be blessed by praying the Beatitudes. Oh, I pray that right now. I pray your blessing upon each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You be blessed today. And this week, as we continue our devotional time through the book of Acts, the early church, I will launch 30 days of world missions. It all starts in Acts chapter 13, as the Spirit calls Paul the Apostle with Barnabas, to launch out on what would become three world missionary trips. Join me tomorrow morning as we launch in to 30 days of missions. You be blessed today. God loves you, and so do we.